How are you everyone and welcome to our lecture today about element A5 in our ITA, which is about infection prevention and control annual plan. Element A5 composed of four sub-elements and the activities for auditing those sub-elements with either document documentation or staff interview and the score as usual is 0, 1 or 2. Initially, we want to know what is annual infection control plan. It is a written risk-based document with goals and measurable objectives, strategies and evaluation methods. Now, we will elaborate with each sub-element. The first one is sub-element A51. The annual plan is based on infection control risk assessment or what we call it ICRA. And this is very important abbreviation in our infection control program, which will address the processes, procedures, and devices that are identified by infection control practitioners to be associated with the risk of HAIs. And we are going to audit this, uh, this sub-element by document and staff interview. What is a risk assessment? It's a term used to describe the overall process or method to identify and evaluate risk factors that have the potential to cause harm to the patient, staff, and visitors. Why to perform an annual risk assessment? It helps focus activities on essential tasks to reducing critical infection control risk improves patient safety, improves staff safety, improves efficacy or desired results, identifies trainings, issues, understanding of disease transmission and prevention for implementing new interventions. And we will audit this sub-element by reviewing documents like Infection Control Risk Assessment, or what we call it before, ECRA, and Infection Control Annual Plan itself. And we will match ECRA and Annual Plan with the described steps and protocols with examples as follow. While reviewing the document, there are some steps involved in the risk assessment. Step 1 is Annual Infection Control Program Review. Analyze and review data, which is the base of the annual risk assessment. We will look and aggregate the data and analyze them. We will look at the healthcare acquired infection trend, identified infections with the highest probability and potential of harm, known risk, potential risk, contamination and exposure. And of course, this is based on the uh, data aggregated from the previous year. We will review also the compliance with infection control standards, communicable disease prevalence rate or incidence rates, identified environmental issues or concerns, identified organizational area of weaknesses. Our second step in document review will review the risk assessment tool itself. And why is that? Because we need to rank risk by score to determine organizational priorities and to assist in determining where to focus with available resources. We also review to provide basis for developing the infection control plan, identify gaps and in infection prevention measures or processes, provide leadership and patient care providers with known and potential risks, which can directly affect patients and healthcare providers. Risk assessment scoring is a numeric scoring system based upon probability of event occurring. Multiplying the rating for each risk in the area of probability, impact, and organization preparedness and will get the score. Rank <clears throat> risk by total score to help identify priorities. Sort in order of risk. Priorities are used in the development of the infection control plan. As we said, infection control and the plan needs many steps, initially from the 
risk assessment in itself, then to choose the priorities and to develop the action plan. And it should contain the goal, the objectives, and the strategies to achieve those objectives and how to evaluate yourself or your team at the end of each quarter or at the end of the year. Uh, this is an example about uh, the risk uh, assessment uh, form. Uh, all the potential risks should be listed here in the first column. Then it should be assessed according to the probability of occurrence in your hospital. Then the risk or impact of that risk in your hospital and your current situation or how your hospital is prepared against this risk or activity. Uh, and the score will uh, differ uh, and it will be gradual according to your expectation. In probability, it is 4, 3, 2, 1, or 0. In the impact, it's also from 1 to 0. But in the preparedness, it's from 5 to 1. You should multiply the scores in each section and you will get the total score and accordingly to all potential risk. After that, you should order or rank <coughs> the score and then you will work on the top 10 or 15. This is according to your current situation and resources in your hospital. Then you will develop your annual plan. This is also an example about step three, which is annual infection control plan itself. And the plan, as we mentioned, should contain the potential problem or risk after identification from the ICRA, the goals or the objective, strategies or interventions need to be implemented to reach that goal or objective, Resp responsible person or persons or many departments, it's accordingly, the time frame and method of evaluation. And I suggest to have like a very cl clear time frame of monitoring um, your activities or your annual plan uh, component uh, periodically. After formulation of uh, the annual plan, it should be introduced and discussed thoroughly in the infection control committee meetings. And this is for um, ICA auditors. You should review the infection control committee meeting minutes to confirm annual evaluation and approval of the uh, infection control plan itself by the committee members. After document review, we will interview the staffs. We will interview infection control team about steps in evolved in risk assessment and component of ICRA because they need to participate in infection control risk assessment. Also, how they will identify grade according to the probability of occurrence, impact of patient, staff, and visitor, and facility preparedness for that risk. Let them pretend any risk and conduct infection control risk assessment for that specific risk, just to make sure that they understand how to uh, make a risk assessment and how to score it. Now, we will move to sub-element number A5.2, which stated, the plan includes goals for patient safety, like standard precaution, transmission-based isolation precautions, healthcare bundles, and patient and family education. And this uh, sub-element will be reviewed uh, or audited by a document review and staff interview. During our document review for this sub-element, we should make sure if these components, standard precautions, transmission-based isolation precaution, healthcare bundles, and patient and family education is there on their uh, um, annual plan. Uh, so they should be mentioned clearly in the plan uh, in detailed fashion in which the objectives and activities are written along with the KPIs relevant to them. If there is any risk assessment for the patient safety data available, also they should provide you with, like healthcare bundles are related to HAI rates. 
So here is an example about isolation activity. The potential risk is lack of airborne precaution or airborne isolation room in the facility. The goals with measurable objectives also should be stated clearly, like provide adequate isolation facility and airborne isolation rooms according to the standard or, or to the bit capacity or to the uh, risk assessment. Strategies, strategies and method uh, should also mentioned in details like one, send request, follow up previous request for previous negative pressure isolation rooms, HIPAA filters and fixed monitors for continuous monitoring of negative pressure, differentials and air changes per hour. Second step is to make clear guidelines on management of patients with airborne infections till availability of airborne infection isolation rooms. Also, we should decide in our uh, annual plan with the resp responsible person or persons or depar department like higher administrative infection control team for follow-up, directorate or ministry of health uh, and also the time frame, as we mentioned, should be uh, clearly uh, stated, like annually from that specific date till uh, the end of the year, which specified time frame for each activity. And very important just uh, uh, to mention also how to monitor and evaluate that activity or that uh, potential risk assessment of the need for more airborne isolation room depending on the volume of patient in need for airborne isolation admitted to the uh, hospital and how frequent uh, are you going to evaluate uh, your objectives or uh, risk. During our interview or staff interview with infection control team they need to explain the rationale behind the existing annual plan and they should be able to enumerate the goals for patient safety. If they could easily describe and explain the following, how did they prepare and draft the plan, mention the steps of appropriate plan format, logical framework, including the elements like risk probability or priority objectives, situation analysis activities linked with time, place, persons, and others. How could monitor and evaluate the progress regarding the key performance indicators or what we call it KPIs of patient safety? And this is very important point. Now we will continue to sub element number A5.3, which is stated, the plan includes goals for healthcare workers safety like immunization, post-exposure management and healthcare workers education and also it be audited or evaluated either by document review or staff interview. During document uh, uh, review of the uh, annual plan, we should review and verify if these components like staff immunization, post-exposure management and staff education are mentioned clearly in the plan in detailed fashion in which the objectives and activities are written along with the KPIs relevant to them. If there is any risk assessment for the staff safety data is present like post-exposure management uh, are well related to the incidents or reports of contracting infections. Number of needle stick injuries reported in the uh, previous year, for example. And here is an example about uh, staff safety. The potential risk is declining influenza vaccination coverage among healthcare workers. Goals and measurable objectives is to have 100% influenza vaccination coverage among targeted healthcare workers. And the strategies or method to reach that goal is one, staff education and awareness regarding importance of influenza vaccination, two, availability of adequate vaccines and relevant infection control supply, three, explore and address the reasons of or for uh, declining rates, four, disciplinary procedures for healthcare workers who are non-compliant with the vaccination policy. Responsible persons should be mentioned, like employee health 
team or infection control team time frame either annually or periodically and you should clearly mention the targeted uh, date like for example from January beginning of the year till the end of the year with a specific time frame for each activity monitoring and evaluation method also should be mentioned like vaccination census and coverage rate in each quarter during staff interview, interview, we should interview infection control team to explain the rationale behind the existing annual plan, staff to enumerate the goals for uh, staff uh, safety. If they could easily describe and explain the following, how did they prepare, write the plan, mention the steps for appropriate plan format, logical uh, framework, including the elements like risk, priority objectives, uh, situation analysis, and activities linked with the time, place, persons, and others. And how could they monitor and evaluate the progress regarding the KPIs for the staff safety? Now we reach to the last sub-element in this element, uh, number A5.4. The plan includes metric of required changes in targets and goals to measure achieved proposed activities and it will be evaluated either by document review or staff interview. In document, we should review the annual plan to check the presence of the KPIs column in the logical framework of the plan. Any document written and approved to convince that mechanism of follow-up and monitoring is established and functioning. Metric of required changes in targets and goal to reduce hospital acquired infections. Monitoring and evaluation processes, dashboards, indicators are clearly present in any form like electronic or manual. Why we should monitor our uh, infection control annual plan? Infection control programs should be periodically evaluated to assess the extent to which the objectives are met, the goals accomplished, whether the activities are being performed according to the requirement, to identify aspects that may need improvement, identified via standardized audits, and the regular monitoring and evaluation of goals and timely feedback of healthcare practices according to infection control standards should be performed to prevent and control HAIs and AMR at the healthcare facility level. Feedback should be provided to all audited persons and relevant staffs or departments. During our interviews, we should make sure if the infection control personnel are well acquainted with the technique of how to develop a system of monitoring and evaluation in terms of setting KPIs according to the required goals, and also if are they responding effectively and efficiently to any declining, decreasing in rates and failure to achieve the previously set goals. Those are uh, the references and the website of our lecture and thank you for your time.